This is a different kind of a gift for a familiar occasion. First, let's meet Dr. Wyatt Carboleth, a dedicated man, a hard-working man, who's done a lot for his nation and for mankind. He's busy now, as he has been for many years. He's dictating. We'll expect to hear from you very shortly about this matter, et cetera, et cetera. You know how to finish it off. What else? You said a memo for Dr. Schiller. Oh, yes. Dave, I'm flying down to Washington tonight. I agree with you. We're being strangled by the security measures. They're piling on the effect. I'll see if they won't agree to cut some of the red tape. Wyatt. That's all, Nora. Sorry to make you work into the evening this way. Oh, I don't mind, Dr. Carboleth. Anyway, it isn't even 8 o'clock yet. Well, we'll try to avoid it in the future. You got my plane reservation? There was a cancellation, the 11.30 flight. You can pick your ticket up at the desk. Fine. Good night, then. I'm going out to dinner now. You can leave uh, after you type those up. I'll drop back here on my way to the plane and sign them. Nothing else? No, there wasn't any... Oh. What? There was a Miss Dina Carboleth by this afternoon when you were down at Dr. Schiller's lab. She didn't say, but I guess she was a relative, the same name as yours and all. I said you weren't in right then. She said not to bother. She'd see you later. She didn't leave any message, and with all this getting things cleaned up for your trip... Never heard of her. That's all right, Nora. If it's important, she'll get in touch again. Good night. Good night. Good night, Dr. Carboleth. Dunsmuir Hotel. Right. Lucky you happened to spot me there. I was just going to head back for the end of my shift, but this Dunsmuir Hotel's on the way. Say, that's a kind of a residence hotel, isn't it, that Dunsmuir? I mean, old people and retired people and like that, you know. Uh, sometimes, uh, seems like every time I get a call to go there, it's an old lady or something. Or something. No offense, guy. I, I just meant... You mean it's full of pensioners. It is. All right, where would you suggest as a good place to eat? To eat? Dinner. Oh, you mean someplace good. How about the uh, Chateau Blanc? Take me there. this stool taken? No, quite free. Thanks. Scotch and soda bartender. Not crowding you, am I? Not at all, Dr. Carvalet. Know me, do you? Can't say I know you. <laughs> I wouldn't expect you to. Nor would I. Beautiful young blondes and cocktail lounges aren't exactly part of my normal run of experience. Head of research programs aren't mine. I called on you this afternoon. My name is Dina Carvalis. Oh, you're that woman. I thought we might be relatives. I doubt it. It's an uncommon name. It is, but the only relatives that I know are a couple of first cousins in their 60s. You'd have to be very distant indeed. Oh, but I am distant. I belong to the African branch of the family. <laughs> and they all admire you tremendously, particularly for your responsibility for the Schiller effect. The Schiller effect? Well, of course. Now, where would Dr. Schiller have been without you? I wonder. No place, of course. Ever since I was a little girl. Are you going to eat? Will you invite me, too? Certainly. Come along. Oh, good. Our second person in this story is Dina, the giver. She's preparing her gift now. It's a very strange gift for that familiar occasion. Now, let's see that menu. I'll have... Oh, uh, what would you like, uh, uh, Dina? Oh, let me order for both of us. All right, go ahead. Oh, but not here. 
This is going to be a surprise. You wait right here at the table. I'm going off an order where you can't hear. What the blazes is all this? You trying to bankrupt me, young lady? I couldn't eat all of this if I tried. Oh, you're not supposed to eat all of it. You're supposed to taste a little bit of everything. And as for what it costs, you know very well that's the least of your objections. But if you want to make a point of it, it'll hmm. be my treat. It will not. And this wine. I never drink wine. Well, then it's high time you tried some, isn't it? In fact, it's high time you tried anything besides steak and baked potatoes and an occasional scotch whiskey. Who told you about my eating habits? You did. You've got a steak and potato look. And I saw you order scotch at the bar just now. Besides, the three all go together. They do. That's why I like them. Well, right now, you're going to give yourself a chance to like something else for a change. Here. Take some of this on your plate. What's that? Liver sausage? Goose liver pate. Eat some. Now, did you like it, really? All right, young lady. Oh, I wish you'd stop acting like a grandfather. You're only in your 40s, and you look in your 30s, and you keep talking as if you were 90. Very well, Dina. The meal was good. It was very good. I enjoyed it very much. More than any other meal you had in your whole life? Possibly. I'm glad. Oh, there's so much I'd like to do for you. You've done a great deal. Dina, you mentioned Schiller. Oh, I've got an idea. Now, you don't have to leave for the airport yet, do you? The airport? No, no, I'd, uh, I don't have to be there until 11.30, and it's not 9 yet. Well, I've got a wonderful idea. We're just a few blocks from the lakefront. It's such a nice, warm night. Let me show you my boat. All right. Let's go look at your boat. Oh, good. Two hundred and twenty. Two sixty. Three hundred. You look so handsome standing there on the flying bridge like that. Oh, Wyatt, you should have got yourself a boat long ago when you first wanted one. You always like fast, clean things so much. 340, 350, that's plenty. What kind of hole has this thing got anyway? It steps up to a couple of knife-edged keels when it starts moving fast. Like a catamaran? Yeah, something like a catamaran. Well, what kind of power plant does it use? Let, let me look at it. It's sealed. Please don't bother about that now. We've only got a little time left before you have to leave for your plane. How could an inboard cruiser this size get up on a couple of thin keels? Dina... Its weight is decreased in proportion as its speed increases. It's the Schiller effect, Wyatt. The Schiller effect. Here, I'll take the wheel, Wyatt. Let's go back to the house. <laughs> seem to have the impression that a scientist doesn't really want to play. It's rather a false idea because many times a dedicated and busy man simply doesn't have the time to take off and do the things that he's always wanted to. There are too many things he's got to do. It's quite a change for such a man to have a chance to just try some of the things that he's wanted. Just a moment, I'll turn on the lights. Here, come along, Wyatt. I'll fix you one of those scotch and sodas you like. Sit down, Wyatt. I'll stand for the moment. Quite a place you've got here. I wish I could give it to you. There's light, but no sauce for it. You ask me to sit down, and a chair comes up to me like a dog. Your drink, Wyatt. Put it down. 
Everything I touch in the room is skin temperature, but the air is just enough cooler to be the temperature I like it. That picture window right there gives me a view of the beach outside, but I passed that wall coming in and it's blank. Wyatt. You knew where I'd be for dinner tonight before I did. Wyatt, I haven't been trying to puzzle you. There's nothing miraculous about any of these things. I can believe that. The dinner, the boat, this place, they could all be rigged. Cost a young fortune and require a couple of minor strokes of genius and engineering, but they could be rigged. Oh, darling, they aren't rigged. I didn't want to tell you until the last moment because we had such little time. I don't want to hear. I was going to play along with you to find out right from the moment you first mentioned the Schiller effect in the bar. Now I don't want to know why all this elaborate stage dressing and what it's supposed to set me up for. And do you want to know why I don't want to know? Oh, my dear. Take your hands off me. I'll tell you why. It's because I discovered tonight that it was just as possible for me to make a fool of myself as I always knew it was for any other middle-aged bachelor idiot who finds himself being flattered by the attention of a beautiful girl 20 years younger than he is. Well, we'll leave it at that. I don't know what your game is, and I don't want to know. I'll be in Washington tomorrow, and I'll report this whole thing to security. That should give you 24 hours to get clear. Good night. Wyatt! Wyatt, wait! You, you can't get out. The door won't open for you. Now it comes out. Oh, of course not. I, I'll let you go in a minute. It's almost time for you to leave anyway. Come back. Sit down for just a minute. Am I supposed to have a choice? Here. Here on the couch with me. Give me your hand. Wyatt, what do you think I am? Someone interested in the Schiller effect. Does it matter what else? Wyatt, I am not. <laughs> the Schiller effect is top secret. We can't work for stumbling over agents. You mentioned it casually at the bar after meeting me for ten seconds for the first time. Wyatt, dear, let me tell you a story. By all means. It's a story about a girl that was an adopted child. Adopted into a family that had a very famous name. When she was very young, the girl used to say that she wasn't really adopted at all, but in some way that nobody knew about, she belonged to the family. And this family was named Carboleth. It was named Carboleth. Well, as the girl grew up, she got too old to hold on to such a childish notion, but still she kept reaching out, wanting to belong more than she did. And all that wanting finally fastened on the man who had made that name famous. For the family she belonged to, although she loved them very much, were not real descendants of that man. Second cousins. Second and more distant cousins. Now, this man was remarkable. Not so much for what he had done himself, but for what he had caused others to do. He was not supposed to have been a very pleasant man to know, personally. He demanded too much of others, as well as himself. He pushed too hard. He was supposed to have been cold, hard, an unfeeling man, only interested in success for success's sake. Well, why not? But this girl, because she wanted to love and belong, she looked closer at him than the rest, and she saw deeper... She saw a man who had sacrificed even himself to the purpose, not even of serving humanity, but of making it possible for others to serve humanity to their greatest capacity. Hmm. Oh, look at me, Wyatt. And out of all this, this man got nothing for himself. No fame, no recognition, no friends. No memories. Maybe it was his own fault. Perhaps. But the girl had grown to love him through her study of him. And she made up her mind that for a moment in his life anyway, even if it was only for a few hours, he would know what it was like to have everything he did not have. Dina, 
And you were happy tonight, weren't you? Yes. Yes, I was. I'm so happy. Dina, who are you? Where do you come from? From the future, Wyatt. From 60 years from now. But how did you come back? I can't tell you that, Wyatt. I wasn't supposed to come. Because you changed things? Oh, no. No. I can't change things. I have to go back. Dina. I must. I must. And you have to catch your plane. It's time now. I won't go. You must. There's no way out. We can't wait any longer. You had your evening. Oh, Wyatt, please don't make it any harder on us. Your car is in my driveway. Don't ask me how it got there. Just take it and drive to the airport. No. I'll work out something. It's no use, Wyatt. I don't belong here with you. The fabric of time won't let us change the important things. Goodbye. Goodbye, my dear. Dina! Dina, where are you? Dina. Dina. It's not fair. An hour or two. Why did you... All right, all right, I saw him. Did she think that was kind? To give me just enough to make me unhappy for the rest of my life? No, it wasn't fair. To me, to her, to either of us. And the only thing that could make that fair is if... Times, it's only as time goes by that we learn to appreciate the value of a man who has passed now. But then it's too late to let him know that he has earned the reward he deserves. Too bad we don't have time travelers to let people like Dina let them know while they still lived, perhaps in the last day. <laughs> 